Hey, Gearheads, Jeff from Gear Report. Here at the lake because this is where we go to have fun. This is where we go to hang out with the family and relax. Oftentimes when we're doing that, uh, we'll be out here on the deck, we'll be down on the dock, maybe even out on the boat, we have music playing. And years ago that meant you had to have a tape deck or a radio. Today, it often means a smartphone and either streaming music or MP3 files or playing YouTube videos. Any number of ways you can serve up audio and video content off of a phone deliver it via Bluetooth to a speaker. That's where the Fugu Tough XL speaker comes in. We're gonna talk about it. We'll go through all of the different features, functions, benefits, even a few things that I'd like them to do differently. Stick around. So the idea when Fugu sent their Tough XL portable Bluetooth speaker was we were going to use it in the Project Humvee battle wagon. So a military surplus Humvee uh, that I got from the U.S. Army, I actually bought it from the government. Uh, believe it or not, they have no audio system in it. You don't have a way to listen to tunes when you're driving the Humvee. So a lot of people have installed headset systems. And that's honestly, that's what we use now is I have aviation headsets plugged in and um, I can take an output from my phone and wire it directly into that uh, intercom system and hear the music. It's pretty quiet and that works where we live in North Carolina, but uh, I'm actually in Virginia right now. And Virginia has a law that you can't wear a headset while driving. So um, the intercom with the headsets completely doesn't work. And also driving around town, it can be a pain to put the headsets on. They get a little uncomfortable. It's nice to just have a speaker. With the 24 volt electrical system in the Humvee, it makes it more difficult than just hooking up a radio like you would in a normal car. You've got to have an electrical converter and the wiring and placement, everything's different. You have to kind of make it up as you go because it was not made to have one. That's where a system like this works pretty well. So within the Fugu Tough XL speaker, there's a battery pack. To be honest with you, I've done some research and tried to figure out what the capacity is. The best I can find is 2,400 milliamp hours. Um, that doesn't sound right to me. It looks to me like it has a battery pack with each one of the cells might have that capacity. I'm gonna look into that. I'll put it in the full written review. Right now I wanna give you uh, some thoughts and impressions of this from the time we used it. So the intended use to play music in the Humvee works great as long as we're just around town, not going over about 35 miles an hour or so, but unfortunately, Humvees are incredibly loud vehicles. They're made for combat. They're not made for driving around town, listening to the radio. And the 97 decibels of uh, sound pressure that comes out of the Fugu Tough XL speaker system isn't enough to deal with you know, the overwhelming noise, wind noise, road noise, rattling, harmonic resonance from body panels vibrating. I mean, you name it, it's making noise in the Humvee. This doesn't quite keep up with that. So I was really let down initially that it just doesn't work for, for what I wanted it to. However, we found some additional uses, like I said, here at the lake. It's great for sitting on the dock. 97 decibels when you don't have wind and road noise is really loud. So this is a pretty loud speaker. It's got some features. You see something right here. I am charging my phone off of the Tough XL speaker because there's a USB out port. Now it's charged one of two ways. You can plug in with a micro USB cable, so like a phone charger, and it'll charge very slowly. There's also a wall warp power adapter where you can plug it in and charge it much more rapidly. With the wall adapter, 120 volt, volt converter to charge this, about three and a half hours, should get you about 35 hours of audio playback at half volume. Uh, you're probably looking at uh, 15 or 20 hours if you run it at full volume, which, you know, why would you run it full volume? Because it's, it's really loud. So some other features we have here, there are eight speakers on this unit and different than a lot of um, speaker setups, you'll see two small ones and a large one here. So you've got uh, a range of frequency response here. By, by the way, it goes from 20 Hertz to 50 megahertz is your frequency response on these speakers. You see three here. There's one down here. 
one at the opposite end, three on the other side. They call that three, 360 degree sound. And the idea is if I'm sitting here and my friends are over there, we hear the, the music the same. You know, I can set it here and it's gonna push the sound in all directions. So that, that's a nice benefit. This is the Tough XL version of the, of the Fugu speakers. The Tough line have a metal and plastic uh, cage basically around it. So the core unit is hidden inside there. And uh, this is a pretty rugged protection. It makes it bigger and heavier. This is about five pounds. Uh, we're looking at 13 something, so almost 14 inches by about five inches by about four and a half inches for your dimensions. So not a small unit. They make smaller units. They make units without the armor around it. Uh, there's a style, honestly, I'd have to look up what the others are, um, that have the core unit with, uh, with a covering on it, but not with, with armor wrapped around it. So you've got some buttons on the top. So um, it's really neat when this links with Bluetooth to my Android phone, it actually sends commands. It's not just getting the audio, it's sending commands back. So if I push the back button, let's say I'm watching YouTube videos, I hit the back button, it'll go back to the prior video. If I hit the forward button, it'll go to the next video in sequence. There's a play, which you know can play or pause. There's also a button that if you're on an iOS device, if you're linked to an iOS device, it's gonna activate Siri. If you are on an Android device, it will activate Google Now, uh, which is really kind of neat. You have a volume down and volume up. Those are the buttons that you have here on the other end. Let me unplug the USB that's charging my phone. There we go, so I can turn it around and you'll see the light tells us it's on. There's a 3.5 millimeter jack here. So you can hardwire, you don't have to run with Bluetooth. Uh, you can use a headphone out jack on a device to come in as your audio source. This is the power button. If I push it once, battery is about three quarters. Battery is about three quarters. It, it tells me how much juice the battery has left. If I hold it, it's gonna turn it off. Powering off. Okay. Let's turn it back on, so I'll hold it. Speaker is on. All right. Connected. So here we go. It's connected because it automatically connects. I've already set up a profile with my phone, have Bluetooth turned on. Automatically connects every time it's turned on and powered within the, the same area. This is a Bluetooth, low power Bluetooth remote that you can wear as a wristwatch. And to activate it once it's been turned on, remote connected. Okay, so you saw I held it close and it didn't turn on automatically. When I pushed a button, now it sent a signal and it sensed off. There's my remote and it turned it on so the remote's connected. This remote will let you do the same things that are available on the top. So you have a forward and back. You have a pause play, you have volume up, volume down, and the little circle for Siri or Google Now. So same controls there. Um, and when I have used this in a vehicle, it's been real handy. This, uh, I have the strap here. I think this strap is supposed to be used as a shoulder strap. And through the top, I actually use it different. I put it on the bottom because in the Humvee, uh, I set it on top of the radio tray and use this strap to secure it to the radio tray so when I go around a corner, it doesn't fall off. Um, so trying to be a little creative in how that was used. On this end, you can see the micro USB, the charging port, and then the USB for you to use to charge a device. So that's where I'm gonna plug this back in and keep my phone charging. So what I like about it, um, I like that this is durable. It's waterproof, it's shockproof, it's sandproof, snowproof, windproof, I mean, mudproof, it's, <laughs> it's proof, okay? Um, I like that it has the 360 degree sound. I like that it has additional controls that link to my um, Android device, uh, and same for iOS, I believe. So let's say that I'm in here and I have Amazon Music up, and doesn't matter what I'm playing here. Let's just hit something and hit play. So now, from here, uh, there we go. We'll turn that down and you can see forward, move to the next song. Okay, we'll turn that up a little. 
There's volume. We'll turn her back down. Okay, here we'll push Google Now. Baby got back. Oh, all right, let's see if that'll play. All right, so we're still playing Amazon Music, not Google Now. A little bit of interface handoff. Does it happen? Does it not happen? Didn't know what to expect there, but uh, we see how that works. All right, we'll turn that off. But you notice it's not just volume control, it was controlling the device. I think that's kind of a neat integration, so I like that. I like the durability. I like it has a battery pack built in. Um, something that drives me nuts. I have spent more time than I'd like to admit on the Fugu website trying to find out what size battery is in here because I know that this is about a 2000 milliamp hour battery in my phone. So every time I want to fully recharge it, I need at least that much juice out of it. I want to know how many charges can I get out of this using it as a battery pack. And I haven't been able to find that on the website. They rate it in, uh, what is it, watts or watt hours, I think. And it was like 38. And I don't know the math to do that conversion. A little frustrating there. I wish they'd be up front and open and just say, here, because most USB power packs that people use to power a mobile device are rated in milliamp hours. I want that data because that's what I want to compare to other things, or at least to know, you know, if, if it is really a 2400 milliamp hour battery that's in here, that means I can charge just once and play a little music and then it's going to be dead. And if that's the case, I need to carry another battery pack with me probably if I want to play music all day because I'm going to run out of juice. So I think it'd be valuable if they shared that information. Another thing that I'd love for them to do differently, I don't like that in order to get information, I have to listen to it. I have to push a button. Battery is about three quarters. Okay, I had to push a button to hear that. I would prefer if I push the button to see something, you know, maybe they have four lights here and three of them light up to show me it's at three quarters. I'd much prefer that because then I don't have to have it making noise and talking to me. Um, I'm also the guy that doesn't like when I call uh, a business and I have to talk to a phone tree with an automated, you know, please say what kind of problem you're having and we'll route you to the right person. I hate that, just give me a number to push. So for people like me, I, I really don't like that it talks to me. I don't like that it says speaker is on. I don't like that it says your speaker is turning off. I really don't like that at all. I'd much rather I had a visual indicator and not an audio indicator. There's one other thing I would change about this off the top of my head. My phone is currently being charged from the battery pack, okay? It's doing that because I'm connected with Bluetooth. If I disconnect the Bluetooth on my phone, then in about a minute or so, the power will be shut off from the battery pack and my phone will stop charging. Now, what's neat about the battery pack and the output is it's a higher amp output than you find in a lot of uh, little USB battery packs. So I have a scope, for example, that is an electronic rifle scope that does day and night and video and a whole variety of things. Uh, you can see the ATN uh, X-Site 2 uh, we've got a couple videos up, we've got some more re review videos coming. It takes some special batteries that I don't want to go out and pay for, so I will tr I'll run it off of a battery pack. And most of my battery packs don't put out enough current to keep up with that device. This actually does. It runs, it, it runs that scope dead solid stable. I love it. However, it has to be, the Fugu device has to be connected via Bluetooth in order to continue outputting power. And I absolutely hate that because let's say I wanna take it hunting. I wanna use this as my power supply in the deer blind to power my scope. When I turn it on, it's gonna say. Speaker is on. And all the deer around are gonna hear that and that's not acceptable, it won't work. So basically what this means is some of the reasons, some of the ways I would use this as a power supply because it works better than my other power supplies, I can't. And that's a little annoying to me. I wish that whenever I plug something in, it's always gonna give me power, whether it's turned on or not. That would be 10 times better for me. I'd really like if it didn't talk to me when I turn it on and off. Those are the bad things. The good things, 360 sound, pretty good volume, easy to connect, reliable, everything I've attempted to connect it to, it works well. I love the device control that comes over that Bluetooth connection. I love the Bluetooth remote control. 
Um, I like that I can get this strap to strap it down, use it as a shoulder strap. There's also a handle strap. All of those things are great. Um, the audio quality, I'm not an audiophile. I don't have a highly tuned ear. I can tell you it sounds pretty good. Um, I don't have the equipment to verify the frequency response to say, you know, is it better or worse? Does it do more than others? I can tell you that up to about three quarters volume, everything sounds crystal clear. You get up in that upper quarter of the volume and it does sound a little overdriven and overpowered a bit. So far, didn't work for what I wanted it for uh, using it in the vehicle, but I've had great success with it every other time and place that I've used it, and uh, I really like it. Uh, the question I think comes down to, do I like it enough to pay $250? Because that's what the sale price is on the Fugu website right now, or Amazon or any place else. I'll put a link where you can go to Amazon and buy this if you want it. Um, I, I don't know if the power worked all the time, if it didn't talk to me when I turn it on and off, I'd be much more willing to pay that 250 bucks. I think it's a great speaker. I like it. I don't know. If they change things a little bit, I'd be much more willing to pay that premium price for it. It is a premium speaker. It has really nice packaging. Um, it has more of an iPhone, Apple packaging, marketing type feel than it does, say, a Jensen or something you might find at, uh, at Walmart. I don't think you'll find these at Walmart. Um, what else can I say about it? I don't know. Let me know what questions you have. Check us out on all the social media platforms. Give us a like, subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, it, it would be it mean a lot to me if you go ahead and click the subscribe button and then a little bell beside it that's for notifications so when we post new videos you'll know about those you can see we got a lot of stuff coming that you don't want to miss and we'll see you at the range